back with these uh, knuckleheads here. Uh, we finally got the uh, World War II uh, crud and corruption off of them. They're fairly clean. Actually, these are not a, a matched pair. We have two rear heads here because I want to show you some before and after stuff. Um, let's see. I guess uh, first thing we want to show you is a, some fin repair, which is basically the first thing we, we did to this, uh, to this cylinder head. Um, and also some of the problem areas that these knuckleheads have inherently, just about all of them, um, they have problems with the, uh, with the uh, head bolt threads is the main thing that goes wrong with them, uh, as well as being extremely brittle uh, cast iron. They're, uh, you know, they're pretty good heads other than that. If you want to take a look at this one, this is a bone stock one. Here's a, we're going to take the spigots out of these things and, and replace them with late model spigots. What we normally do is we just weld a slug of metal in there and we take our wrench and put it in the vise. We, we've already loosened this thing up and we just unscrew these things out of the heads. You know, first we have to grind the rivet off and punch the rivet through, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, then we're going to go back on here with some late model spigots. This is one of the modifications that we do to them. So you guys can use your O-ring manifolds on them. I'll take this one back out for now and uh, show you some of the repair work that's been done on this set of heads. Uh, starting with uh, this particular one, this is a bone stock head. What happened to this, to the, to this head is a, someone had already done a thread repair with these helicoils which are kind of like a Mickey Mouse way to go about fixing these heads. Uh, what we've done, he came, the, the heads came in, the, ch the corner was com completely busted off. Fortunately the guy saved it and uh, we put the corner back on. I don't know if you can see that or not. Can you dis dissimulate the difference in color there? Part of it's weld and part of it's uh, cast iron. And uh, after we put that chunk back on, then we put an insert in it. It's a full circle insert, which I'm going to show you. But you can take a look at the difference in these things. The rest of these holes have helicoils in them, which is kind of, like I said, the Mickey Mouse way to fix them. They don't really last very long. That's why this one came out in the first place. The, uh, the integrity of this cast iron is very poor, so you need more than just a just a helicoil in them to fix them. Here's an insert. Here's the kind of inserts we use right here. This is, it's a full circle insert. It's not just a little Mickey Mouse piece of wire. When we put these things in there, it's all over. You'll never have a problem again. Here's a, an installation kit behind me. You can take a look at it. It's got a few tools that we buy. Some things we have to make as well to be sure that the things are done properly. They give you little instructions to go with it. And that's what we use and what we recommend everybody uses. We do this in the milling machine. I'll show you how we set these things up. Basically we've got a fixture that, that bolts across here and uh, I'll pull it out of the box and stick it on the head for you and you can uh, take a look and see uh, just exactly how we how we set them up. It's really easy to do. Our fixture out here and uh, we, we put it in place and we're going to show you how we tighten it down. It's very simple. We've got a threaded piece of plate here and we tighten it down with a wrench. We put it in the milling machine in the vise. We level it up. I'm just tightening these things finger tight for now just to give you guys an idea of what it looks like when we do it. We set it up in the milling machine and of course then we, we uh, you know, zero up on each hole individually with our tools and do all the machine work to them in the mill. And uh, when, when they're all done, if you want to come in and take a look at this other cylinder head right here, this is one that's, that's completely finished as far as the uh, uh, head bolt threads are concerned. As you can see, we've got these head bolt inserts uh, installed in, in all these holes. There's a lot of other work that's been, that's been done to these, uh, these cylinder heads. Also, I'm going to discuss with you here as we're going. 
Um, we've got, uh, let's see, both of these fins have been, been replaced. We welded this one back on, we welded that one back on. Um, let's see if there aren't some other fins that... Take a look here. I guess those were the two fins on this head that we put on. As you can see, we dual plug these heads as well. I think we're the only people in the world that have taken the time to dual plug knuckles to, to set up on them. Here's what, the, here's what it looks like from the outside. Also, we found that the clearance is so critical in here that you don't have more than a, just a ten, 10 or 15 thousandths clearance. We use these little peanut spark plugs. Late model automotive style. They're real small in diameter and uh, that enables a guy to get in there with a socket and remove the spark plugs without having to, to uh, remove the push rods. You do have to collapse the tubes to, to get the socket in there, but that's not, a, that's not a, a, a problem. In fact, it's quite simple to do. Okay, I'm gonna turn this thing around. We're gonna screw the plug in the hole for you. Let you see what it looks like when it's all assembled. about there and that's where it's that's where it stops also we're going to give you an interior shot of these ports and and uh, the valve seats I'll just leave the spark plug in there for now Have you, it, it, we've uh, we're doing a no lead conversion on these cylinder heads as well what we've done is put our hard seats in them and when we do that, we uh, always increase the size of the intake. We update the cylinder head so that they'll breathe properly, especially for, for these guys that have the big inch motors. They really need to get every bit they can get. Here's a, here's a stock one. You want to see the difference in the size. I don't know if you can actually tell the difference here. The size of the intake. But it's considerably bigger. In fact, we go, we make the valves for these ourselves right here. We use an inch and 15 16 intake. It's a standard shovel head size valve. We also put them in, in pan heads as well when we uh, no lead, uh, no lead convert the, uh, the heads. Also, you can uh, take a look in these ports. This is, uh, we're not completely finished with this pair. They've got a little ways to go. But uh, if you want to take a look in, in, in the ports, uh, I'll move this thing around so you can get some different angles on it. We can actually get better than 25% increase in intake flow on these, on these old knuckleheads. Why don't we, uh, let me give, give you an interior shot on this, on this stock port, and then we can run over to the other one. Go ahead and break it off for right now, and uh, we'll come right back with you. Okay, we're back, and we're going to show you the uh, the port work that we're doing on these heads. It's going to be a little difficult for me to see what exactly uh, is going on here, but I'll tell you what. Here's one lump that we completely remove. We remove this entire lump. Also, these other lumps in here, we remove those guys too. And there's a couple of other lumps in this thing that... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this head around. I'm just going to look, look around in it myself. Here's another big lump. I don't know if you can see this lump, but it's a considerably large lump right here. We take that one completely out. And don't forget we're opening this hole up to an inch and 15 sixteenths valve size. And you see that big lump right there? We take that one out. Let me rotate this thing around some more. I think that's that's pretty much most of most of the the large problems that these things have. We roll the edge and roll the corners and and all that sort of thing and and back cut in here a little bit and then after we uh, put the spigots in, then we go in there and we we take the edge off the spigot and uh, taper it down. Now I'm going to show you one that's completely finished and ready for the spigot installation. Just sitting right over here behind me. Okay, here's the one that's completely done. This is an after shot. As you can see, the lump's completely gone here. It's a nice smooth, we, we make a nice little ramp here for the, for the uh, air to flow up in there. 
the lump is gone from back here. All the lumps have been taken out in here. We've, we've been using our tool finish in these ports which uh, atomizes the fuel. I might have to talk to my cameraman here to rotate this head around to suit his, uh, his uh, focal point. So go ahead and, and talk to me if you want me to move this thing around. Look pretty good here. Take a look, see from this side. See that other that other lump is gone. I'll move it around for you. That lump there is gone. It was a big lump right there. It's gone. And we make a ramp right up to the edge of the valve guide hole. Nice smooth ramp. Like I was saying, you can get we get over 25% increase in, in flow specs on these uh, on these intake ports. Okay, we're going to show you an exhaust here too. Okay, here's a bone stock exhaust port. I don't know if you can look down in it from this angle over here. See if you can get it. If you can get a get a shot of these great big humongous lumps in this thing. See this big lump here. Well, this is a problem. This is a significant problem right across this area. That just completely kills off the exhaust flow. Also, there's another little lump up in here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not because you're facing right into the, uh, into the sunlight. But uh, I can rotate this thing around a little bit. And what we do is we, uh, we, we use our little, uh, our little secret method in here and we make, you know, we make our, our valleys. We're going to show you that right now. We might as well go to it. Here's the uh, here's a finished exhaust port. The first thing you're going to notice is this big uh, this big lump of well that we put in there. On the exhaust ports on these things, a standard procedure in the process of removing that lump, we uh, always find the air, and we do that intentionally. And then we go back in there and we put a gold tooth in it, so we get the uh, we get the flow up as high as absolutely possible. You want me to move that thing around at all? Just say so. And we make a ramp all the way up around the around around the corners, uh, right up to the edge of, of the guide boss. Okay, we're back. Uh, there was something else I wanted to mention about this dual plug setup. Uh, for the guys that want to go the go the extra mile, we do make a reducer to uh, size this big uh, bodacious is a good word spark plug of the original knucklehead spark plug down to match the uh, the new size. We'll show you that later if this guy does want to go that extra mile, but uh, that can, that we do offer. So you can run all the same spark plugs in these knuckleheads if you'd like. Also, while we've got the camera rolling and everything is nice and quiet, there's some other uh, some other parts that you guys might be interested in seeing that we make by hand here that are not available anywhere else in, in the world. Um, come on over here and let me show you these uh, these valve guides for starters. We make these guys out of a, out of a chunk of uh, uh, cast iron from scratch. And we can make them in any oversize we want. Also, when they're installed on the head and we get all the measurements, we machine them down for the valve stem seals that we're going to use. Basically the same old uh, spring-loaded Teflon stem seal that we use on all our other applications are going to be used on this job as well. And that's what we start out with. These are, these are uh, very porous cast iron guides and they work the best. Also, we've got laid out here our, our intake spigots, which you, which you guys have already taken a look at. These are, the, these are uh, some recontoured and polished valves. Uh, we make these intakes out of blanks. We cut them down, we cut the diameter down, we, we, we machine all the, uh, all the angles on them, swirl polished on the back. We've got the width and the, 
you know, the thickness and all that sort of stuff all taken care of for you. Once we get them in the heads, we measure where we want to put the keeper groove, and we cut the keeper groove in them. You know, we cut them off to, you know, basically match this length. Uh, this is uh, this particular valve is a titanium nitrided exhaust valve that uh, we like to use in these knuckleheads. Um, we also recontour and polish these valves. We bring the uh, width down to 60 thousandths on the exhaust and 45 thousandths on the intakes. Real nice setup for these knuckleheads. It's about the best thing that anybody's come up with yet, and we're real proud of it here at Flow Dynamics. If there's anything else here, and these are the, you know, a couple of the cans that that fit over there before we install the valve guides and you know we've got all the valve springs over here and we're not ready to put them together but when we get ready uh, we'll get the camera back on the scene and we'll finish up with you until then we'll see you later